Hey guys, welcome to Tech Notebook. In this video, I'm going to show you how I automated my garage door using an ESP8266 and Home Assistant. This is the first video in my new series titled Making My Garage Door Smart with Home Assistant. Here, I'll be going over some of the automations I set up with an ESP8266 in my garage. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's get started. Let me first address why I didn't just use a pre-built solution like MyQ for this. It's because I've tried using MyQ before, and for me, it was just really unreliable. It's failed multiple times when I've really needed it, which was really frustrating. Moreover, the MyQ subreddit is just full of people having problems with the service, and frankly, I can't trust it anymore. And with Chamberlain shutting down third-party access to its API, it made me rethink whether I should be giving some company access to my garage door. So I decided to create a solution that I could control locally using Home Assistant. This way I can integrate it with my existing smart home setup and have full control. My only other requirement was that I wanted a solution that wouldn't interfere with the existing wiring of my garage door opener or controller. This way, the lock function on my garage door opener would also apply to the ESP8266. With this out of the way, let me show you how I automated my garage door with an ESP8266. The three main components I used here were an ESP8266 microcontroller, a relay, and a garage door remote similar to the one you put in your car. I also used a micro USB cable to power the ESP and connect it to a computer, some jumper wires to connect the ESP to the relay, and some speaker wire and a soldering iron to connect the relay to the garage door remote. I also used a Zigbee door sensor to report the state of my garage door. Now, speaking from experience, I don't recommend pairing the remote to your garage door opener before wiring everything up. I accidentally opened my garage door many times during the soldering and wiring processes, so just save yourself the hassle and do it after. Let's first start by looking at how I connected the relay to the garage door remote. All right, so to connect the garage door remote to the relay, I first needed to solder some wires to the switches on the garage door remote. Well, I wasn't able to get a really good video of the wires that I soldered to the remote, so I'm just gonna demo to you how I did it on a drawing here. So the first thing I did was I poked two holes using a soldering iron right on the side of the garage door remote so I could pass the wires through. Then from there, I connected two wires to the switch on the rightmost side, and I fed them through to the other side of the garage door remote. Then from here, I was able to take this and pass it into the relay. So the goal of connecting the relay to the switch on the garage door remote is to simulate a button press. So what happens is when the ESP8266 triggers this relay, it turns it on, what'll happen is it'll complete a circuit between the relay and the button. That'll make this garage door remote think that this button was pressed. And on the ESP8266's side, what we'll need to do is turn this relay on for about a quarter of a second, and then right after that, turn it off. And what this will do is it will just make it seem like I press the button, and then the garage door remote will send a signal to the garage door to open it. Now that the wires are soldered to the garage door remote, we can wire it into the relay. To do this, we need to put the two wires into the two terminals labeled NO, which stands for normally open. This just means that if the relay loses power, the circuit will remain open. If it was normally closed, that means the moment the ESP loses power, your garage door will open. And we definitely don't want that. Now to connect the relay to the ESP, we need to connect VCC to VCC, ground to ground. And finally, for the input pin, I chose pin D7 on the ESP, which is GPIO 13. Now the only thing we have left is the Home Assistant integration. So to do this, I used ESP Home, to flash the firmware onto my ESP8266. So in ESP Home, what we need to do, go to New Device, Continue, then hit Next, and our device type is an ESP8266, and you need to copy that encryption key for later. I'll hit Skip for now, and then we need to go into Edit. Now for this board thing up top that says ESP8266, so we need to change this now to Node MCUV2, so that way uh, ESP Home knows the updated configuration of our pins. We need to now add the logic for the garage door opener. All right, so here is all the code I had prepared before this for the garage door opener logic. I will leave it in the description below next to everything else I used for this project. So basically once you've done that, you can go click install 
And the way I like to install it is using this manual download button all the way at the bottom. I found that these other options tend to be slightly unreliable, so I'm going to use the manual download option. And now I'm just going to save the binary that it presented me. And now I'm going to flash it onto the ESP8266. So you need to make sure that the ESP is plugged into your computer. And now you can open a tool like Node MCU Flasher if you're on Windows. Um, that's going to be available on this GitHub that I'll have linked below. You just need to go into the Node MCU project, Node MCU Flasher, and then Win64 release, and there should be your option. If you have Mac or Linux, there's an alternate tool available, which I will also link below in the description. But since we're on Windows, I'm just going to use the ESP8266 Flasher. And in this tool, what you'll need to do is go to config, click on the settings icon, and then select your binary file. Once that's done, you just need to go into operation and make sure the correct port is selected. Just click flash. All right, and now the flashing is complete. So now all we need to do is go into Home Assistant and add the Node MCU to our Home Assistant instance. All right, and now in my Home Assistant Discover Devices page, we can now see that the garage door opener from ESP Home has popped up. So now what we need to do is just click configure and submit. And now it'll ask you for the encryption key, which we already copied earlier. So now we just need to paste in over here. If you forgot it, it's going to be in the same configuration file that we used to flash the ESP. All right, and once you do that, it should pop up with a menu that looks something like this with a success message, and it will ask you to place the Node MCU in a location. And then I'm just gonna hit finish. Now, if we go into our ESP Home section and into Garage Opener, we should see both of these. We are not gonna need the second entity right here, so let's just click on it real quick, go to settings and uh, disable this. And with this, we have the ability to open and close our garage door. So let me give you a quick demonstration of how it works. All right, so now I'm in my garage and I'm just going to tap the switch. And as you can see, it's opening. And closing the garage is pretty much the same process. So I'm just gonna slide the switch back down and we can see that the garage door is closing. And with that working, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.